Hey guys, so this will be a quick video. I saw a dream a night ago. Let me share the dream with you first, and then I want to walk you through some, some uh, verses here. It's beautiful. This will really encourage you. I saw myself. The only way to explain it is stations that were set up. Like I was just going from one place to the next, asking for bread. I wasn't begging for bread. It wasn't like, oh, please, can I have some bread? No, I was going to these places expecting to receive what was mine. Watching myself going and receiving bread at every one of these stations. Uh, by the end of it, I had so much bread. I had like, it was just, you know, overflowing in my arms, okay? I woke up. And of course, I'm thinking about this dream and so many things were downloaded to me uh, when I woke up thinking about it and praying about it. And I want to share that part with you, okay? There's Matthew 15 that talks about the same thing. John chapter 6 also talks about the same miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000. A lot of people are familiar with this story, but sometimes uh, these stories that we, we are very familiar with um, have some golden nuggets in them. So you have to dig in. You have to dig a little bit to, to find uh, the treasure. So let me share this and maybe, maybe you've seen this before, maybe you haven't. But either way, this will be encouraging for you, okay? So let me actually read from John 6. So this is, this is the story. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. See, now that part, see that little detail that John shares is the reason why I decided to share from John chapter 6 first before going into Mark. The, the fact that the Jewish Passover festival was near is very significant. Because when I saw the dream, the Lord was deeply encouraging me saying, this is for now. You must know about this. You must enjoy this. I knew that God was telling me this is for me to partake of now. Not someday in the future, but now for this season. It was probably springtime then, right? It had to be. I'm going to quickly switch to Mark's telling of the story here in Mark chapter 6, verses 39 and 40. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. You're not sitting in a desert, you're sitting in green grass. Let me switch back to John chapter 6. We know they were nearing the Passover festival. Now, that's significant, guys, because we are, according to the Hebrew calendar, in a couple of days, actually next week, we're going to move into the first month in the Hebrew calendar. In other words, Nisan, which is the exact time in which this happened. The story happened towards the end of April is when the Jewish people are going to celebrate the Passover. So now when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Okay, it's not that he didn't have the answer to that. He asked us only to test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do. He already had in mind what he was going to do. He was testing Philip to see if Philip is on board with how Jesus was thinking. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. For just a bite, it would take that long and that much money right, is what his response was. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy, here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? So Philip had that one response. Andrew's response seems to be a little bit better, just a little bit, <laughs> only because he notices this boy with his small lunch. Okay, he noticed it. But like it's like he's coming closer to what Jesus is thinking. Because remember, Jesus already had in mind what he was going to do. <laughs> this is so encouraging. But then Andrew says, but how far will they go among so many? So that, that part is similar to what Philip was thinking. So Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. Jesus then took the loaves gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. Did you guys hear that? And he did the same with the fish. As much as they wanted, they could eat. If a person sitting there said, you know, I'm good, I'm good, I just need these five bites, then that's what they get. 
If somebody else said, oh, I could eat another basket full of food, then that's what they'll get. But there's a little detail that we don't read here in John chapter 6, so I need to jump over uh, here to Mark chapter 6. And verse 41, Jesus takes the five loaves and the two fish, and he looks up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, right? Now, guys, that's crucial. This is the same thing that happened when Jesus sat at the table sharing the Holy Communion with his disciples before he was crucified. Let me read to you Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 onwards. As they ate, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples. He said to them, this is my body, eat it. Then taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks to the Father. He entered into covenant with them saying, this is my blood. This is the cup of the what? The new covenant. He entered into a covenant with them. So this whole scene that we read in John chapter 6 and Matthew 15, this miracle that took place, it was not just for the 5,000 plus people. It was so much more than that. Sometimes we miss the bigger picture, but God is highlighting something to us. Even right now, as I'm sharing this, I pray that you receive this because that miracle was specially, I think, for the disciples to see because it's the same thing that happens over in Matthew chapter 26. For example, when Jesus breaks the bread, blesses it and gives it to who his disciples and enters into a covenant with them. They didn't get it. Nobody, I don't think anybody got it when they were receiving uh, the bread and the fish, you know, multiplied. Um, they were fed, they were satisfied, but that was it. But later on, that would serve as a very important reminder for them that indeed the very bread of life was standing in their presence. Not only that, but the Passover lamb, the lamb of God was right there in their midst to give them life, eternal life, right? So that we are forever satisfied in Jesus. That is the grand message of this miracle story, you guys. But then there's so many beautiful takeaways. Remember my dream was I'm going from station to station, receiving bread that was for me. I knew it it was for me. And I was I was moving with uh with confidence that I'm going to receive what is mine. This beautiful detail here, let's not miss this. It says here that Jesus asked them to gather the leftovers. They picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. Wow. Nothing of what you give to the Lord is wasted, which itself is a very important lesson. If you hold on to something so tightly, you will lose it. But if you give that thing to the Lord, including your finances and anything else that the Lord has given you and is entrusting you and, and he wants you to be a good steward of it, so anything... Nothing of what is given to him will be wasted, number one. But number two, don't miss this, you guys. What a beautiful verse. The fact that Jesus is not wasteful. You can apply this to anything. Even your life experiences, the, the most painful things you've gone through, not just the good things, but the bad things that you have experienced in your life will not be wasted because... He doesn't like anything to go to waste. That's why he's called the Redeemer. He restores things. He multiplies things. He doesn't like to waste anything. Are you getting a clear picture of who our God is? You need to know. You need to know what he's like. So you also must not waste anything, whether that is time, resources, money, your talent, your gifts that God has given you, whatever don't waste it. He doesn't like that because he's not like that. Right after the dream, this is what came to mind. I want to read to you from 1 Kings chapter 17. This other miracle that we just read about, it happened around the Passover time, right? Now, coming here to 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse 7, sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Over there was green grass, Passover time, all right? But yeah, of course, they were hungry. They were tired. Over here, no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. 
go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. So guys, this is not a very good time for anybody. Can you think of a dry season that you've experienced? Okay, this is one of those times. I've directed a widow there to supply you with food. Your good father, you don't have to beg him for things. What do fathers do? They provide. If he's taking care of the lilies and the birds in the air, he will most certainly take care of you. Hope you know that. But there's something else here. So he went, as he was directed, to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. <laughs> a piece of bread. But look at her response. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. That's all she had. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But First, but first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. And so the story goes like this, that she does as she is told, and there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Did you hear that? In keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by the prophet. In keeping with the word. That's when things work out in your favor. I just shared a whole bunch of golden nuggets with you guys. Now, if you keep with this word, you will be blessed. The bread is available. It's available for me. It is available for you. But we have to keep in line with the word. You may think that Elijah did the wrong thing, asking to be fed first, when clearly she and her son are not in a good position. How could he have said, no, give me, feed me first? You know, that's just sounds wrong doesn't it doesn't sound very nice <laughs> like he has no compassion but listen he was following the word of the lord because god clearly told him i have directed a widow to supply you with food and he recognized that because he recognized that he was even able to hear furthermore from the lord and shares that promise with this woman as well that the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. And she listened and she was blessed. All three of them. Okay, there's so much more to the story, but I'm going to stop there. Like I said earlier, we're going into the month of Nisan. You may be hearing all kinds of news, news headlines every day, news on YouTube, and your friends and family are talking about this too. Maybe some of you are in a situation where you lost your job or you're living from paycheck to paycheck. Now, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you. In other words, I pray that in every way you may prosper and enjoy good health, even as your soul prospers. So your prosperity and your good health, your prosperity, meaning in every area of your life, is dependent on your soul prospering. Your soul is made up of your mind, your will, your emotions, even your conscience, we need our mind to be renewed. If we have set limits in our mind concerning prosperity, we're not going to prosper. As simple as that. That's kind of like Jesus saying, you know, as much as they wanted, they could eat. So you may be saying, you know, no, this is not for us. This is the prosperity gospel. We don't know. No, that's not for me. There's only one gospel and I share it all the time <laughs> on this channel. I'm sharing with you from the word of God. You can take it or leave it. 
I want you guys to meditate on this. I encourage you to do this. I pray that this will just settle in your mind. The desire is to see his children prosper in every way. And here's a reason why, you guys. If you learn proper stewardship of everything, including your finances, you'll understand that every single thing, everything, and I talk about this a lot on this channel, your talents, your growth, your transformation, everything is directly connected to destiny, your destiny. And there are people there are ministries there's god's work there's kingdom things okay kingdom purposes in your path in your path in your life's journey to destiny being fulfilled which means that your life is not just about you so please do not limit yourself saying oh you know i'm okay with what i have uh, you know god doesn't want us to prosper like that you're limiting yourself and that is an insult to god because God wants to do so much more in you and through you. And you're saying, no, this, this much is enough. So you know what? You will only see fruit matching how you think and what you believe. In every area, this is true. This is why your soul prospering is so crucial. Guys, think about it. Something you know about God today. Maybe you didn't know it previously, like a year ago. But because you know that thing about God today... Is it blessing you? I'm sure it is. Nobody's going to say, no, nah, nah, there's not much benefit of knowing these things about God that I know now. Uh, no, of course. So we're growing in our knowledge and understanding of God. Things that pertain to his kingdom. We're part of his kingdom. So there are things that we need to know, things that we, we're going to grow into. Don't place these limits because God wants to do incredible things in your life and in your family, in your extended family and friends, your community, but also beyond that, you guys. God's plans are so much bigger. But here's the important thing. You have to be in alignment with God's will and purpose. You need to know his character so that you can do all things in his character. Keep your eyes fixed on the Lord, you guys, and be well rested in him so that no matter what is going on, you're not going to hold on to these things th saying, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. No. <sighs> you will walk in freedom. You'll have peace. You'll have joy. And you'll have that surety, that guarantee that the Holy Spirit is my guarantee of all things. He who started this good work in me will bring it to completion. He's going to do this. And I'm just going to say yes to everything the Lord wants to do in me and through me. And I want to be a part of God's wonderful plans, no matter what is going on around me. I want to partner with you, Lord. I'm coming with you, Jesus. Where are you going? I want to go too. <laughs> that childlikeness is so, so crucial. Whatever you are trying to build for yourself, you're going to have to sustain it to yourself as well. But if it is according to God's will and purpose, the first fruits of everything you do always goes to God. You understand your source. You understand your prize is the Lord himself. You understand all these things. And you don't stray away from it for a minute. Then you can have peace in your heart that God is your sustainer. Amen. And through what the Lord has given you and what you're stewarding, many other people will be blessed. Does God want us to prosper even at, in, in such a time as this? Yes. Going into the, the months that we're, we're going into, you need to know this. So if you're saying, man, I, go, I did everything wrong. I messed up big time. God can redeem all of that, you guys. Come on, run to Jesus. He will give you the wisdom to tackle all those things. Maybe you did mistakes. Maybe it was somebody else who caused it. The devil stole it. Whatever the reason is. Thank you, Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus. If this really encouraged you, I pray that you leave me a comment saying that it did. Because that would encourage me to know that it did. <laughs> I will see you guys tonight, 6 p.m. Central Time, for our daily Bible study. Thank you, guys.